be taken on taken on uh, New Zealand and England uh, uh, unabashedly. But now in a responsible position, obviously I have to uh, make uh, a measured statement here. Uh, fact is that, you know, we feel, I feel very strongly about how uh, the withdrawal uh, scenario uh, was painted uh, and exercised. Uh, because um, I felt that, you know, we, we probably were used and then we were binned, um, uh, and which, is, which is extremely frustrating. Um, and so, it, and, and I certainly feel that, you know, we are up against kind of a Western mindset, a Western block um, who are unaware of the ground realities of Pakistan and have taken a call based on collective um, uh, sort of uh, threat perception, uh, collective wisdom, uh, without realizing how much work Pakistan has put in, uh, thousands of baby steps to get us where we are uh, with regard to launching cricket in Pakistan. So that's been the frustrating part. Um, I've spoken my mind, I've spoken the truth. Uh, I've allowed my feelings to and emotions to, um, to completely take over. Um, and so that is the situation. So uh, now we don't have a robust um, domestic international calendar uh, with uh, New Zealand, England gone, uh, West Indies uh, could be a little jittery. We know that Australians will probably do what the New Zealanders and England have done. So here goes uh, our domestic international calendar for you. Over to you. Ramis, um, it's Lawrence Booth here from the Daily Mail. Can I ask whether there's any question of compensation from the ECB for this cancellation? Uh, we've not spoken as a group. Um, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we look at uh, all the angles. Uh, we certainly have indicated uh, between the lines, I mean, a couple of letters that have written to uh, New Zealand Cricket Board that, you know, uh, we have suffered uh, financially. Uh, and uh, so we will put up a case, certainly. Ramiz, uh, and it's Mark from Cricket Info. Oh, sorry, Lawrence, are you continuing? Or? Sorry, can I just ask one more? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. sorry. Um, just a question of England. England are, to, are due to visit Pakistan next year. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of trust over this. Uh, will you be tempted at all to, to cancel that trip in advance because you need to get your calendar sorted? Yeah, I mean, I spoke this uh, with Ian as well, um, who's the chairman of ECB. I said, what is the guarantee of England coming back and playing here in 2022 or whenever the date is? Because a month before that tour, you can easily quote um, tiredness, players being spooked again, uh, sick of um, living in a bubble, or a threat perception that probably will once again be not shared with us. Uh, so, um, and he clearly had no answer to that. So yeah, we'll have a uh, backup plan for sure. Thank you. Uh, Ramiz Osman from Cricket Point. I know, it's, I know it's early at the moment, but have you guys gotten any handle on the kind of financial fallout you're expecting from one, these two series? And also, you know, if, if the season doesn't go as, as planned, uh, do you have like a handle on what kind of impact we're looking at financially? I think we know that the numbers for New Zealand withdrawal, uh, you know, how much will suffer. Uh, this has not really been calculated. I know the, the, the production numbers are quite high because we were looking for a high quality uh, production of, uh, of uh, England and New Zealand uh, tours. So we'll sit down and, uh, and see, you know, how, how much we've suffered financially, but we know the exact number uh, for New Zealand uh, not playing here. Are you in a position to tell us that number? <laughs> no, I'm smart. Okay, okay, fair enough. I, and my just my 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 uh, follow up question was that: Is there have you guys at all had any thoughts about uh, again looking 
looking to a neutral venue or are you still insisting that you know we will continue playing so, in Pakistan? Yeah, I mean, that question was popped up by a few of the uh, local journals as well. And so my stance and our stance for many years now is that uh, we've made so much of sacrifice. We've spent a lot of money uh, trying to instill confidence uh, uh, in the visiting teams to play in Pakistan. So uh, we're not going to look uh, outwards or, or look for uh, international neutral venues. Uh, it's going to be Pakistan right from now till the end. Thanks, Ramin. Thanks. Thanks. Askar and then Andrew. Uh, Rami, it's John Effridge from The Sun here. A um, couple of questions, if I may. Um, your disappointment or, or your anger, is it particularly because Pakistan came to the UK last year but before anyone was vaccinated at the height of the COVID pandemic and saved the ECB tens of millions of pounds in broadcast revenue? Is, is that the overriding feeling of anger you have towards the ECB? You know, uh, John, it's the feeling of being used and then binned. That is the feeling that I have right now. Uh, and um, so a little bit of hand-holding, a little bit of caring was needed, especially after New Zealand pullout. And we didn't get that from ECB from England, uh, which is so frustrating. So yes, you're right. Uh, you know, we've been going out of our way to adjust, to accommodate the international demands. We've been such a responsible part of the cricket fraternity. Uh, and in return, uh, we get a response from ECB quoting that the players were spooked by New Zealand's withdrawal. I mean, what does that mean? Uh, and, and players been living in, uh, in a bubble environment and they're so they are, they're, they're mentally not there, they're lethargic, even though we offered them uh, terms of just making it for four days and uh, housing them just next door to the stadium uh, in our national high performance facility, which is like absolutely A grade. Um, it, it, it was about helping a member of the cricket fraternity when he needed you the most. Uh, and we didn't get that from ECB. I will to ask, um, uh, during your conversations with Ian Lockmore and maybe others at the ECB, do they say that they've spoken to the players? Because we know that Owen Morgan has previously pulled out of tours, one to Bangladesh, when he was concerned about security concerns. England flew home fairly promptly from South Africa um, about 10 months ago. Have the players, in your view, exerted pressure on the ETB, do you think? I don't know how the board is structured in England. I mean, it's the, uh, the, the Players Association, then, you know, you've got the players themselves, and then there's the cricket board. And so, I don't know. I mean, I mean he appeared uh, as if the, the, um, the decision was out of his hands, uh, that there were other influencers who uh, who really made the call in the end on his behalf. Um, but the fact is, John, that when you travel to subcontinent, when you travel to Pakistan, you must have that mindset where there'll be few bumps on the way that you're not traveling to US or any Western country. So there'll be chaos on the roads when it comes to traffic, for example, there'll be unnecessary honking and all that. And so, uh, and so you come here with, uh, with, with that emotional spirit, with, with that cricketing spirit that, look, we are here, uh, maybe against the odds, uh, trying to just stretch our comfort zone, uh, break the barriers, uh, and play out a couple of matches, just to make sure that we are behind Pakistan, that you have made a lot of sacrifice to, to get here. Uh, and we didn't see that from... from uh, New Zealand and now not from England as well. Okay. Andrew and uh, Athos, please. Andrew, you there? Okay, yep. we'll move on. Uh, okay, Andrew, please go ahead. Yeah, good day, Ramesh. It's Andrew Wood from the Sydney Morning Herald um, in Australia. Um, just uh, wanted to ask you about um, the tour, Australia's tour next year. Um, firstly, what gives you the um, uh, the impression that um, Australia won't tour, and what would it do to um, Australia's standing as a global cricket citizen if they weren't to tour? Given that they've already pulled out of uh, a tour of South Africa um, uh, earlier this year. 
So, I mean, you know, uh, I got to know for the first time that there's a concept like the five eyes. Uh, and so when a threat uh, is received, it's put in a, uh, in a pot for Australia and for New Zealand, for England, for America, for Canada uh, to assess, and then they make a sovereign call on it. Uh, but looking at the trend, how things have transpired in New Zealand first, then England, maybe West Indies, I'm not too sure, and then definitely Australia. So um, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the pattern that has developed. And that's why I say this Western block, this Western mentality of not understanding the issue, sitting about 20,000 miles away and making a call on our security um, uh, agencies and on security, on cricket security, which is very frustrating because we have the best security agencies, the most battle-hardened security agencies in the world and not sharing your fear, not sharing the threat perception with them is, is ridiculing our, uh, our DNA in a way. Uh, and so uh, I think Australia need to be responsible. It's as simple as that because the theme here is to help out Pakistan uh, and they must not have a dominoes effect. Uh, and it appears as if we're going to experience a dominoes effect here. And would it damage Australia's um, reputation in the cricket world as a, as a country that that only um, only two is the, the the countries that make their money and and won't help out? Yeah, you know, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you, you see, oh, obviously, I mean, you've got to be responsible. As it is, it's a small cricket fraternity, um, and Australia is a major player of that cricket fraternity. So, I mean. Uh, what use would Australia be to Pakistan if they act on, on New Zealand's behavior or if they see England withdrawing from Pakistan and take a call uh, on England's uh, take on, on the situation. And by the way, England's take was not security. It was players being spooked and players being uncomfortable and players association uh, being iffy. And so, um, uh, I mean, there's no cricketing sense of that withdrawal. And I just hope that uh, we're able to convince Australia that uh, Pakistan is safe. If it is safe for the Australians in PSL, why can't it be safe for the entire Australian cricket team? And by the way, the neutral security agent or guy that we had here who goes all over the world has quoted Pakistan's security as best in the sporting world. It beats the football security. It beats the Formula One security. Um, I don't know how else we can uh, convince the world that everything is fine here. Rory, Kyron, and Amlan, please. Hi, uh, Ramiz. Do, do you think there's any any prospect? You've talked about this Western Bloc uh, of countries, and and you know it's a divide, clearly a sharp divide. Is there any threat to the? international sort of the, the future tours program, the, 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 the international fixture list, really. It, could this become a reciprocal problem and when suddenly we see international cricket not being what it has been for the last few years? Yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, I'm viewing it like that. I'm, I'm sure the other uh, Asian countries uh, feel the same way, that, as if we're living on the edge when it comes to playing the Western bloc, uh, that we've got to be uh, at our best uh, when we invite them here. Uh, and, and so we're so worried that, uh, you know, other things got to be absolutely 2000% correct for them to travel to Asia, uh, which is just not right. Um, and and I, I don't want this Asia versus rest or West versus rest debate um, to take precedent over the game of cricket. Uh, but it appears if uh, security threat perception is going to be made as a get out clause, then any one of the members could have a problem with any other member, whether we're playing Australia in Australia or whether we're playing England in England. I can certainly get up tomorrow morning and say that we're not comfortable playing, say, uh, in a certain part of England uh, because uh, we feel uh, that there could be this little threat. Uh, uh, and so it's just not right. The tone has got to be set properly here. Thanks. And just one more. Could you tell me, have you spoken to any of your players who came to England the last two years 
uh, and who in many cases, you know, left family, sat in bubbles, went through, a, jumped through a lot of hoops for England to play cricket last summer in particular. Have you spoken to them about maybe if they feel uh, cheated yeah, or hurt? Yeah, I, I've had a preliminary meeting with them, but that was for just my introduction as the chairman of the board. But now I'm going to have uh, another one probably tomorrow because uh, the team is going to meet uh, the prime minister. Uh, and, and so I have a good mind of talking to them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Carter? Karan, you there? Okay, we'll move on. And uh, Amlan? Ramesh Bhai, you spoke about the mindset issue. You think it's probably easy to walk out of certain countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, I mean, who have suffered in the past, and it's probably high time for ICC to intervene that similar things don't happen. You see, uh, Amlan, the problem is that, you know, you can quote security and nobody uh, can contest that point. Uh, but my, uh, my uh, frustration is that New Zealand did not share their security concerns at all. Uh, you know, a decision was made probably in Auckland, 20,000 miles away. They do not have uh, their intelligence agency here in Pakistan. So they have a, a network of people in Tehran. I, I believe, you know, uh, their security is based out of Iran. Uh, and, and so nothing was shared. And, and one evening they informed us and then they took off. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, uh, it's a debatable point. Uh, you've got to look at the other uh, mindset as well. But my, my point is that when you travel to Pakistan or to subcontinent, you've got to really beat the odds every time. And you've got to have a set of players who are willing to, uh, to experience the bumps, maybe. Uh, they come here for PSL, they go to Bangladesh and play their uh, franchise cricket, nothing happens. You know, they're quite happy with the food, with the environment where they're lodged, you know, uh, and, and certainly as a group, uh, they have an opinion about a certain country, uh, which is extremely uh, uncalled for and unjustified. Nick and then Ali. Oh, hi, Ramiz. It's Nick Holt from The Telegraph in the UK. Um, yes, Nick. Hi, uh, the ECB have got some fairly difficult conversations coming up with England players over the conditions for touring Australia. Uh, do you think in any way that uh, the Pakistan tour suffered as a bit of collateral damage and that they didn't want to make those discussions even harder by, um, by having difficult chats about going to Pakistan as well? The cynic point is that, you know, it wasn't as if it was a two-month gig. It was a four-day gig. And it was more than a cricket tour. It was about... Uh, you know, it, it was about Pakistan and applauding the efforts that it had taken to get Pakistan back on track at home. Nothing more than that. I mean, our World Cup uh, practice um, wouldn't really have been affected by it, uh, or preparation wouldn't have been really affected by a couple of matches against England. It was just a gesture uh, of the West that we are here to support uh, a, a cricket friend, a, a part of the cricket fraternity. Nothing more than that. When you were talking to Ian Watmore, did you, did you get the impression that the Ashes had an impact on, on this as well? Oh, I mean, it's talking about player being sort of, you know, just a little bit fatigued, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's just not only England. I mean, you know, the other uh, cricket boards and other cricket players have also suffered as a result. It's not been an easy going uh, for the last year and a half. Uh, but you've got to put up with it. Um, it's as simple as that, but you can't pick and choose. Certainly can't. Thank you. Ali? Oh, hi, Ramiz. It's Ali Martin here from The Guardian. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, you mentioned, obviously you mentioned in the past about players from the PSL, uh, from England coming over to play in the PSL, etc. Was there any discussion about um, England sending over a team, even if some of the first team players in inverted commas didn't fancy it? No, I mean, um, that point wasn't raised aggressively by me, but uh, then Ian uh, said that, you know, there wasn't even chance of a, you know, a, a second 11 kind of a, a situation uh, being discussed because uh, it's a complete no-no. So, so it just wasn't even an option? Yeah, I mean, 
it, it was an option for ECB even to send, you know, spare players. Mm. And and also just on the bubble fatigue side of things, how does it sort of sit with you when you know sort of nine of the eighteen England sort of first team squad are currently playing in the IPL? Does it does that all stack up for you that they're that they're jaded and, and bubbled out? I mean, you see that a cricketer has to go through many phases, and 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 that's why you know we're temperamentally great as, as sports persons. Um, and that is their choice. If they want to be part of the bubble life, uh, so be it. Uh, obviously, there's the extra attraction of money and, and the stage. Um, uh, but then, you know, uh, my grouse is that, uh, you know, my frustration is that when Pakistan needed ECB, it did not stand uh, behind Pakistan. Thank you. Yes. Dino, Ayush and Kaushik, please. Uh, hi, Rami. It's uh, Dean Wilson here from the Daily Mirror. Um, I just wonder, quite a lot of um, the stuff that you're saying has been about the, the cricket fraternity and, and an idea that there's some kind of, um, you know, unspoken bond between cricket boards. I mean, is that just a complete fallacy? And actually, in the same way that there's no honour amongst thieves, the same could be said about, uh, about cricket boards. And ultimately, you, you kind of can no longer really rely on each other as, as, as friends and everything has to be done through contracts and, and legally and, and, and financially. Otherwise, this will continue to happen forever and a day. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think it's, it's cosmetic. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we, we get together as a group. We talk a lot about the add-ons, but we don't really address the elephant in the room. For example, security, for example, pulling out of tours, uh, just because you want to, or, um, you know, um, why is just there just this block of two, three uh, nations running the show? Stuff like that. Um, so I agree. I mean, it's, it's more cosmetic than anything else because um, we've tried to create a bond. We've played by the book for so many years. We've gotten, uh, you know, we, we, we sort of made sure that, you know, uh, we, we go out and play in New Zealand in, in tough times, in quarantine times, to England, elsewhere. So we've been a very responsible member of this fraternity, but in return, we get nothing. So obviously everything is cosmetic because there are self-interests. Uh, then you've got these you know, blocks of, of countries uh, and we know that uh, it's graded. So there's the top tier and the, and the not so top tier. Uh, and, and so we, we live in, in such existence, which can't be right for, for cricket. I mean, it, seem, it seems in many ways that the kind of you know, global landscape is pretty broken and, and has been for some time. And you know, we could have a lengthy debate about the carve up the big three and the, the money and power that has kind of been um, filtering down from the ICC for many a time we've heard from Chief Executive of the West Indies about the inequality of finance in the game and, and and nothing ever seems to be done. So what kind of confidence do you have? I mean, you said that you're going to raise this with the ICC, but what kind of confidence do you have that the ICC... I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but it, it feels like a laughing matter. What confidence do you have that the ICC will do anything? Nothing will come out. Uh, I think that is the reason why I've mentioned that, you know, we need to grow our own cricket economy uh, and there's a lot of potential in Pakistan. Um, I think we've got to have the best cricket team in the world. Uh, so not give excuses to the teams not to come to Pakistan, you know. So, so we, we get our economics uh, covered, looked after. We get our cricketing, cricket covered through our cricket performances. Uh, uh, and that is the best we can do. But to seek help and advice and guidance and... Um, knock some sense um, at that level, it's going to be extremely tough. Thank you. And then Karan. Um, hi, Ramiz. Um, Kaushik from Crickbuzz here. Uh, almost a follow-up uh, to what uh, uh, Dean had just asked, uh, in the sense that all of this is a little too raw right now, and uh, the ramifications too are likely to linger. But uh, what exactly... Is, will be the next step that you guys can do here now from, from PCB and yourself as chairman? 
you see Kaushik point is that uh, we need to coexist and coexist with honor, with dignity. It can't be that you treat certain cricket boards roughly, um, that you use certain cricket boards and then you bin us, uh, my earlier statement. So you've got to have uh, respect for each other. You've got to look at the, 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 the ground situation, the ground reality and adjust accordingly. Provided you're hell bent on making sure that cricket is a winner. But if you start working in little compartments, if you start sort of politicizing the entire um, uh, game of cricket, uh, you know, trying to get the best matches for yourself, you know, um, trying to create this, this great cricket economy for yourself and forgetting about the rest is going to hit you and the rest eventually. And time will catch up. Uh, so nobody should be in absolute power position and no should be, nobody should be looked upon as, uh, as a cricket board that can be, uh, you know, get, that can be roughed up uh, and put to use when it interests you and bend when you don't really need them. Hi, Ruiz. It's uh, Kieran from AFP here. Uh, just to follow up on Ali's question about the, the IPL and the English players going there, they will now obviously be free to play in the knockout stages of the IPL um, rather than, than playing in Pakistan. How much of an influence do you think that had done the decision, given that it was, it was player motivated rather than necessarily security reasons? Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it's, uh, it's a fantastic dichotomy, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you're quoting fatigue, you're quoting uh, mental tension and players being spooked. Uh, and what, uh, Dubai is about an hour and a half fight from here. Uh, and, and so before the World Cup, they're quite happy to be caged in a bubble environment and carry on uh, with, uh, with the tournament. Uh, so one feels slighted, uh, one feels humiliated because uh, withdrawal uh, doesn't have an answer, frankly speaking. Thank you, gents. We have just uh, completed one round. Does anyone have any uh, follow-up questions? We can't. Usman, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Lawrence. I think. Rory, anyone has got a follow-up question? Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, actually, sorry. Could I could I ask a question if that's possible? Ali from the Guardian. Yes, Ali. Uh, could, could I just check the, the ECB statement yesterday was quite quite lengthy and went into some detail. It, does it completely marry up with the reasons you were given yourselves? Does, does, does the public explanation match the explanation given to the PCB? Built none, zero. Uh, sorry, you're saying you're saying none of it. None of it does. None of it. No, no. I mean, this was like uh, you know more cosmetic than anything else. Okay, so the, so the reasons you were given were completely different from those those offers. So the reasons were, the, you know, we 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 said that it's an emotional uh, emotional moment for us, uh, and ECB has got to look at the emotional aspect uh, of the situation. Uh, and in return, we're just getting that, you know, the players are spooked. Players are spooked. So I mean, I mean, how do you address that situation? I don't know. Fair enough. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very, very much indeed, gentlemen, and have a great sorry, day. One more. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, one, one, sorry. One, more, one more thing. One more thing. Sorry, Remy. Yes. Um, uh, slightly kind of dev devil's advocate, I, I guess. Um, do, do you feel as though actually had New Zealand continued with their tour, that England would have gone ahead with theirs? And, and so on the basis of New Zealand pulling out, can you in some way um, understand or appreciate though that that unease that um, some players would have on the basis that they've never been to Pakistan before and, and it is a, a completely new, as you say, it's, it's a something that you need to go in with a kind of open, art, um, open eyes and open heart. But when you see it, one team pull out, um, you know, leave a country 
rather than play cricket there. If, if you're just, you know, a player, as you say, 2,000 miles away, sorry, 10,000 miles away, whatever, that, that you would have some um, hesitation. Do, 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 you, do you see that? And, and do you feel perhaps slightly more frustration with New Zealand as a result of this? Clearly, I mean, it's a domino's effect. Um, you know, the chat that I had with the British High Commissioner in Islamabad was that, look, um, you know, this threat was shared by, by all of us, as I said, five eyes. Uh, and that Britain did not change their travel advisory meant, I mean, obviously between the lines, what he was trying to tell us is that it wasn't such a huge threat. Um, so I can understand players' uh, perception regarding Pakistan, but then you see them lining up for PSL. And all these young kids um, have been part of PSL. The future asset of England have all come here and played PSL matches. Uh, and then there was the option of who wants to come, who doesn't want to come. We, we also uh, talked about that. Maybe England sending their, their spare team or uh, you know three, four regular players uh, mixing with, uh, with the bench players, something like that. But then you know uh, that wasn't even considered by ECB. But the, 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 sorry, and the, the extra element with the ECB obviously was that this was a, a men's and women's tour and so you know there's no PSL for women's none of the England women had ever been to Pakistan um, you know as individuals or as a team and do you, do you think that added an extra layer of complexity um, when you're dealing with with two teams and of course the ECB very much treating those two teams with the same uh, level of um, of, of, I don't know, of, of care. Yeah. No, uh, Dean, I mean, uh, uh, women's cricket or cricket tour wasn't discussed at all. It was, I mean, the focus was on uh, on men's tour. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, that's a uh, rounds of the session. Thank you very, very much indeed, gentlemen, for your time. It's thank much you. appreciated. Have a great day. Thanks, Ami. Thanks, Rambo. Thanks a lot.